Toxic air has been at illegal levels in most urban areas in the UK for nearly a decade. Every year, an estimated 9,500 people die early due to long-term exposure to air pollution. Children are particularly vulnerable as their lungs are still developing. So we conducted an experiment to measure the air quality of one family's walk to school along one of the most polluted roads in London. I'm uh, Natasha, I'm Simona's mum. I've been living here for the past, um, well I've been living here for the past 30 years. What about um, me? <laughs> it's all about you. <laughs> Yeah, our journey to school is very, very stuffy, very suffocating. You can't breathe. It can definitely like damage her development and probably her lungs and whatever. And there's nothing I can do about it. And even with my newborn, it's even worse. Each day, Natasha, Simona and her baby brother walk to school and a large part of their 30-minute school run takes them down Marlebone Road, one of the most polluted in the country. We strapped an air monitor to the pram which measures the levels of pollutants PM2.5 and PM10. Simona carried a monitor on her back that measures the levels of nitrogen dioxide. PM2.5 and PM10 are tiny particulate matter that we recorded in real time by the second. Nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, is emitted by diesel cars and is one of the most harmful gases. We recorded NO2 by the minute. These lines indicate the EU annual mean legal limits for each. The British government is breaking the law when these legal limits are exceeded over the course of a year. So let's see the experiment. Natasha and her kids begin their journey down Marlebone Road. And as you will see, the data will spike at this first busy intersection. Here's pollution expert, Professor Jonathan Grigg, to talk us through more of the data. So the, the two um, measures, the PM2.5, PM10 and nitrogen dioxide, can be thought of as a, as a combined mi mixture. Uh, we can't really, in our big studies, distinguish which is the most toxic part because they're all emitted together. Well, so this is a pretty typical uh, London road, but a high level of vehicles, many of those are diesel vehicles, which is generating lots of nitrogen dioxide and particles. Interestingly, she's going through this sort of canyon here, uh, where I suspect that a lot of the gases and particles are being trapped. That's why you're seeing this uh, sudden uh, spike. Um, children are particularly vulnerable from air pollution because their lungs are developing and so even small changes in the development can actually have large effects uh, over the life course of a child. Okay, so here they reach the school and in schools uh, situated in areas of very high pollution, children tend to have slightly lower levels of lung function. Parents ask me in my clinic, what, what can we do? And it's very difficult to give advice. Um, I think what we have to think about it is as a public health measure and it's, it's up to government and local government to do the action. Even though pollution was lower than usual on this day, because the family are exposed to toxic air throughout the year, these levels are illegal. But what about the school itself? Simona's school, St Mary's Bryanston Square, is one of the 50 most polluted schools in the UK. The school has been promised £20,000 from the Mayor and Westminster Council to install a system to filter dirty air. The school closes the road during morning drop-off and end-of-school pick-up 
to prevent cars from idling outside the gates. Students have pollution masks to wear during school trips. So the school is doing all it can to mitigate the impact of pollution on its students. But what about local government? The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, introduced an ultra-low emission zone in April this year, levying a charge on the worst polluting vehicles. It only currently covers a small area of central London. It is due to be extended in late 2021. Meanwhile, London's air remains illegally dirty.